Now, one of the most important aspects of the confined space standard is that we need to understand what is a confined space. And whenever I teach on-site courses, quite often we'll spend the better part of an hour just identifying what a confined space is because in most cases when an employee gets injured or killed in a confined space, it wasn't that they deliberately were trying to do something wrong. They just didn't understand the hazard. So let's go through the confined space definition. Now this is according to OSHA. And I wanna make sure, I wanna clarify that at your facility, you may have a definition of a confined space that is stricter than OSHA. So you can always be stricter, but you cannot be less strict. So this is gonna be the minimum standard. Number one, a space large enough and so configured that a worker can bodily enter and perform his or her assigned work. So the opening the space has to be large enough for somebody to physically enter the confined space. And I actually contacted OSHA once and I asked OSHA what would be the minimum height or size of somebody that OSHA would consider large enough to bodily enter. OSHA wouldn't respond. They said it depends upon that the workforce, the size of the workers at that workforce. Now, what I've used as a general rule of thumb is an employee five feet or taller. In most of the facilities that I work with, most employees that I've noticed are five feet or taller. But if you have somebody shorter or smaller than that, you need to make sure you consider that in your definition of what is large enough to bodily enter and perform assigned work. Now here's what's very important. To be a confined space, we have to meet all three definitions. So one, large enough to bodily enter and perform assigned work. Number two, has limited or restricted means for entry or exit. Let's talk about restricted means for entry or exit. If you have to open uh, a flange, an opening, and in this case, you're crawling to get inside the storage tank, that's restricted entry or exit. If you have to go up and down a ladder, that's restricted entry or exit. If you can open a door and stand upright and go into this opening, or you've got a set of stairs, OSHA does not consider that restricted entry or exit. So we meet condition number two, restricted entry or exit. And number three is not designed for continuous human occupancy. And when we say continuous human occupancy, what we're saying is we do not have natural ventilation. It's not a workplace, work area, where an employee could safely, comfortably be down there for several hours. But let me give you an example of a space that is designed for con continuous human occupancy. If you go to Jiffy Lube or one of these lubratoriums where they change the oil in your car, there are workers down inside these pits changing your oil, they're underneath your car, well, they may be down there for hours at a time working. That area is designed for continuous human occupancy. There is ventilation inside that area. So with respect to condition number three, a, a pit, like in a Jiffy Lube, would not meet condition number three, so it would not be considered a confined space. Now, I wanna to mention to everybody, when I first saw OSHA's definition of a confined space, I thought OSHA had really made a mistake that they had made this definition too restrictive. But as I've gotten more and more involved with confined spaces, OSHA is not saying that even if it's not a confined space, it's not a potential hazard. OSHA is saying that there are probably other standards that exist that you would still have to follow if there's a potential hazard. And then also you have the general duty clause. And let me give you an example of a space where I used to work that was not considered by OSHA confined space, but there was a potential hazard. Uh, we, we had an autoclave pit and there was ether potentially that could be released from that autoclave that would make it potentially a hazardous atmosphere. However, we had a set of stairs going up and down into that space. Well, it was not restricted entry or exit, but we still would permit it by doing a gas check before anybody went into that space. So it's not technically or legally by OSHA confined space, 
but yes, there was still the potential for a hazard, so we still had safe work guidelines to protect workers before they went in and out of that space to make sure we didn't have any ether leaking from the autoclave that could be unsafe for employees to breathe. So here are some examples of confined spaces. So in this example, yes, that's large enough to bodily enter, and it has restricted entry or exit because you have to have a ladder to get access. And once you get inside, it's not designed for a continuous human occupancy. So that meets the definition by OSHA of a, conf of a confined space. Now we talk about what's large enough to bodily enter. I've done quite a work at the Department of Energy facility in Savannah, Georgia, and they had some very, very large reactor cooling water pipes for some of their reactors, uh, you know, to, to cool the reactors. And they found these expert welders, and you can see in this picture right here that these welders barely get to the top of the pickup bed. So let's take a look here. These welders were small enough that they could enter into these reactor pipes and do welding inside those spaces. So when we say what's large enough to bodily enter, but it depends. It depends upon the size of your workforce. And that's going to be part of your, your assessment that we're going to talk about in just a moment. Now here's an example of a compactor. I was teaching a confined space course in New Jersey, and somebody from the New Jersey Department of Labor was actually in attendance of the, the class, and she said that the number one cause of worker fatalities in the state of New Jersey was employees being crushed in balers and compactors. So what I've noticed, and that was about 10 years ago, almost every facility I do work with, they have balers and compactors. And if you go on the internet and write compactor crushing, compactor fatalities, you'll see examples of employees going into compactors, balers, things like that, and believe it or not, I've investigated cases where an employee went into a baler to take a nap uh, on the night shift and somebody didn't know that they were in and came by later and actually activated the baler and crushed them. So that's, a, that's definitely a concern with a baler, so that would be considered a confined space. Garbage trucks, large enough to bodily enter and has restricted entry or exit and not designed for continuous human occupancy. So. A garbage truck is an example of a confined space. Sewers are classic examples of confined spaces. You can physically enter them. You have to have a ladder or a fixed ladder or a portable ladder for access, and they're not designed for continuous human occupancy. So when you see a sewer grating, something like that, pretty much off the bat, you can assume it's a confined space. Now here's an example of an air receiver Unless you're four years or younger, if you open up the opening at the very bottom of that flange, that's not large enough to bodily enter, so that would not be considered a confined space. So that's an example where it's not a confined space, not large enough to bodily enter. Now this is actually in a foundry where they're taking turbine blades and they're doing x-rays as far as quality control you can open this door and you can be seven feet tall and walk straight through these doors so that's not restricted entry or exit. We're not saying that there's not a potential hazard but it's not a confined space. So what would protect workers that may have to go in and do work on this equipment? Well if you handle radiation in the United States you have to have a radiation license you have to have a radiation safety officer so you would have to have programs in place to protect workers who could potentially be exposed to radiation. So, no, it's not a confined space, but there are other safety requirements you would have to follow to protect your workers. Now, about 20 feet from the picture we just saw was another x-ray machine. But this is quite different because employees could potentially enter but they do this, they're going to have restricted entry or exit because they've got to stoop down, they've got to get into this conveyor belt. So large enough to enter and there is restricted entry or exit and not designed for continuous human occupancy. So this would be a confined space. We've got a set of stairs here. Now we've got a, a ladder going up and down, a fixed ladder, a portable ladder, 
that would be restricted entry or exit. Now in this example, we've got a set of stairs with a handrail. That is not restricted entry or exit. So that would not be considered by OSHA to be a confined space. Thank <music> you.